Welcome. In our lesson today, we are going to discuss the functions of the liver. Now, an interesting fact to note is that the liver carries out more than 500 different functions within our body. How incredible is that? Can you even imagine that? Now, in our lesson today, we are going to discuss five of the main functions of the liver. And these are, number one, regulation of blood sugar level, deamination, detoxification, thermoregulation, and lastly, regulation of red blood cells. So stay tuned. Now, the first one, regulation of blood sugar level. So let's break it down. This simply means that the liver plays a role in controlling the amount of sugar present in our blood. Sugar here refers to glucose that is present in our blood. Now, the amount of glucose that is present in our blood is maintained within a certain range. This is between 90 to 100 milligram per 100 cubic centimeters of blood. Now, in case you're wondering, hmm, what is the glucose doing in our blood? Then remember that our blood is the transport medium. So essentially, it's transporting glucose to different parts of the body. And the reason for this is because glucose is required by our cells in order to carry out respiration, leading to the production of energy. This energy is important or it's crucial for the survival of the cells, essentially. Glucose needs to be present in our blood, but the amount of glucose has to be maintained within a certain range, no more or no less than a particular amount. Now, the liver does so with the help of another organ by the name of the pancreas. So the liver works together with the pancreas. And the reason why the pancreas plays such a huge role is because it secretes two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Now, these two hormones are essential in controlling the amount of blood sugar. Now, what happens is that when our blood sugar levels are high, for example, after you've had a meal, the food has been taken to the digestive system and it's been broken down, you know, digestion is complete. The food substances at that point, such as glucose, are then released into the bloodstream. So you're going to have a high amount of glucose present within the blood. So when the pancreatic cells, cells you know, they says that the amount of glucose has increased, what happens is that it triggers a series of effects. So insulin is secreted by the pancreas into the bloodstream. It is then transported up to where the liver is and it gets down to work. So what does the insulin do? Essentially, insulin needs to lower the blood sugar level. Since my blood above, above normal, by insulin. So insulin initiates a series of events which will ensure that the level of sugar in the blood goes back down to normal. Just a reminder, when I talk about sugar, I'm referring to glucose. Now, how does insulin do this? Number one is that insulin increases oxidation of glucose by the liver cells. So glucose is broken down, of course, during respiration in order to produce energy. And that is the reason why after having a meal, you know, a few hours after having a meal, you will experience a spike of energy. You know, you feel like, yeah, because sour me, I can do this. That boost of energy is as a result of insulin getting to work on your excess glucose. So it increases the oxidation of glucose into, okay, to produce energy. So essentially what insulin is doing is that it's removing as much of the excess glucose as possible from the, from the bloodstream so that it can go back down to normal. Now insulin also does two activities. It converts the excess glucose into two different forms. Number one is that the excess glucose is converted to glycogen. Now the glycogen is then stored in the liver. Now, some of the excess glucose is also converted into fats, which are stored underneath our skin. And boom, after some time, what do you notice? The amount of sugar levels in your body has gone back down to normal, thanks to insulin. Now, there's another hormone as mentioned before, glucagon. Now, guys, I know, I know, it can't be confusing, like glycogen, glucagon. Those two terms almost seem the same, right? But... Glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrates in animals. That simply means as animals, when we have excess carbohydrates in our bodies, we tend to store them in form of glycogen. So that is glycogen, which is a carbohydrate. 
glucagon on the other hand is a hormone this is a hormone that is secreted by the pancreas and it's secreted by the pancreas when the blood sugar levels are what are low now i want you to imagine a, sim a scenario where you haven't eaten for hours and hours maybe you're fasting okay whatever the case is there has been no intake of food for quite some time now your cells still require energy because duh they need to survive so where are they supposed to get this energy from when you're not taking in any food now this is where glucagon comes in so glucagon needs to ensure that the amount of glucose within the blood goes back up to normal why so that your cells can use the glucose to produce energy now how does glucagon a hormone ensure that blood sugar levels rise back down to no, rise back up to normal it initiates a series of steps number one is that it converts glycogen and fats to glucose boom do you remember what happened with insulin the reverse of this in the case of insulin we were converting excess glucose into glycogen and fats for storage in the in the case of glucagon we are now converting glycogen and fats into glucose now as you can note from these two examples insulin and glucagon are antagonistic this simply means that they have opposite effects to one another now this of course makes sense because one is released when the blood sugar levels are high and the other is released when the blood sugar levels are low so in the case of glucagon in order to ensure that the blood sugar levels rise back up to normal it, it simulates the conversion of glycogen and fats to glucose see will that increase the amount of glucose in blood yes it will now another thing about glycogen is uh, sorry about glucagon is that it also stimulates or it decreases the amount of glucose that is being oxidized so when you talk about glucose the breakdown of glucose by the liver cells glucagon ensures that oxidation of glucose is decreased any less of glucose is broken down by the liver cells why to ensure there's more of it in the bloodstream okay pause there let's recap the level of sugar in our blood is controlled by the liver together with the pancreas. The pancreas plays a huge role because it secretes two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Insulin and glucagon work in opposite ways and therefore are said to be antagonistic to one another. Insulin is secreted when the blood sugar levels are high. It brings the blood sugar levels back to normal. Glucagon, on the other hand, is secreted when the blood sugar levels are low. It brings the blood sugar levels back to normal. So they do so by initiating a certain series of events as such. That, ladies and gentlemen, is regulation of blood sugar level by the liver.